Welcome back to the Conference USA Tip-Off Show. I'm John Triffin. Pleased to be joined by Louisiana Tech women's basketball head coach, Brooke Storr. Coach, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Tell me, how do you feel about your team you have coming back this season? Well, I think there's a lot of excitement. I love coming to work every day and getting to be around this group of young women. And what they accomplished last year was obviously exciting and winning the West Division and then disappointing loss in the championship game against Charlotte. But um, great to be back in the postseason and just had a lot of fun experiences, shared experiences with this group um, every single day. And excited to build on that. I think the one thing that we've, you know, talked a lot about is, um, you know, building on that momentum, but last year's done. And uh, this, this year's group will be judged based off of what they accomplish and um, the importance of how we continue to come together and, and grow as a group and um, face it, the, the challenges and adversity every day that we're going to face and um, see what that, ha what that builds in us and the character that that develops as we head into March and uh, postseason play. From the early practices and scrimmages, what have you seen so far from the team? What are the strengths you like? Well, uh, we have experience. And I think, you know, we started two freshmen at times last year, and, and they had some rough moments early on. Um, but I thought you saw a group that really grew together. And um, they, they've been there. They know what it takes. Uh, they've had that um, experience of being in a championship environment and um, understanding what that looks like and so I think there's been a great sense of purpose and um, just a hunger and a desire to get back there and not just you know we talk a lot about one more um, with our team and, and people are going to look at that and go oh, they're talking about one more they needed one more win um, to win the conference championship and go to the NCAA tournament and that's not what we're viewing it as um, we're viewing it as one more rep, one more um, interaction, one more um, encouragement, one more block, block out, one more um, offensive rebound. You know, just anything that we can give one more of ourselves and each other um, to encourage one another and to be better. I think that that's what, um, you know, has been really unique about this group. This has been one of the most unique um, group of women I've been around and been able to coach because they're just selfless. They really care, genuinely care about one another. Um, and I think that's what's made it so fun to be around them every day. They brought us great joy. Um, even even last year when we started 0-4 in conference play, um, I loved getting on the bus with them. And I've said that over and over. And we have so many of them back um, that it's it's almost like they've picked up where they left off, but then we've added some to the mix, whether that be Gabby Green, who's, um, you know, sat out for us last year and has a ton of experience. And so um, we're really excited about that, looking forward to what she's going to bring to this group and just how our, our dynamic has changed from last year to this year. Let's talk about Gabby a little bit. She's the pit transfer who transferred last year but sat out due to an injury. How is her health and what does she bring to the court? Oh, she's just constant energy. She's one of the best teammates I've ever been around. Uh, she impacted our group more than any, almost more than anyone last year and never stepped foot on the court. Uh, and I think that says a lot about her and who she is as a person, number one, um, but what kind of teammate she is. And we talk a lot about in our program, great teams have great teammates, and we work on developing great teammates every single day. Um, and that starts with myself. Um, and trickles on down to our managers and our support staff. And Gabby epitomizes that, but she's constant energy on the floor. She has experience at a high level in junior college. She has experience at high level in the ACC. And then she has um, just age. And I think that, you know, experience is the greatest teacher. And um, she definitely brings that for us, but she can really shoot the basketball, um, just has a presence about her on the court, gets after it defensively, constant communication. And um, we're just really excited about the energy. We missed her last year, um, so it's really good to have her back on the floor and um, seeing her in live action every single day. In the preseason poll, you guys have picked to finish second. You have about 90% of your scoring coming back. Tell us about some more of those key pieces that you're going to rely on this season. Well, I think, you know, when you, you talk about our team, it, it starts with Keanu Walker and Anna Robertson and um, what they're bringing to the floor is consistency, night in and night out, you know, what they're going to get um, scoring-wise, defensive-wise, um, leadership-wise, and I think that's huge. Um, there's a lot of comfort and confidence um, that those two give us um, and our group every single day, and so... Obviously, that's a, a big a big part of that. I think you can look to see um, the emergence of Amaya Brandon um, late last season in conference play and throughout the postseason. We had some big moments from Robin Lee 
Um, and so we have some some players with experience that I think are um, you know really key to to our success and continued success this season. Are there any newcomers that you're going to rely on? I know you also have a six foot one transfer from TCU. Any newcomers you can uh, talk about making an impact right away? Sure, I think our freshmen are getting adjusted. Um, I think, you know, the one thing that we do have is experience. And so, you know, those freshmen are going to really have to earn uh, those minutes that they get. And, um, you know, that will, will come down to how, how well they um, adapt and, and learn our system and understand the pace at which we have to play and the tempo every single day. And just the the mental aspect of the game, how quickly things transition from offense to defense or a good play to a bad play. And so the ones that can do that the most um, quickly um, will be able to get on the floor. This is your seventh season, and I can tell just by talking to you that you are super excited about the group you have this year. Any fun moments already in the preseason that you can share with us that you really enjoyed being around the team? Sure. I think uh, the one thing that this group brings fun all the time, and they've allowed me to have fun um, as a coach, and I think that's so important. Um, what we do is really hard, and it, it's it's so critical. Um, I think that we understand our players, and I, I do feel like I have a really good pulse on this group and know what they need and who they are um, and how they operate. And we had a great time this summer. We really try to incorporate a lot of different things um, outside of basketball. Um, that that we feel like add to our group and our chemistry and dynamic and we've we've done this two years in a row now and we have a big um, we call it karaoke but it's really it's really not karaoke they um, they that some of they sing but um, they they come up with a routine we divide up into groups and they have to come up with a routine they choreo uh, they choreograph their um, their dance they pick their song they have outfits. And it was a blast just to see their creativity, see their um, the way they competed, and they got into it, and it was a lot of fun. But I think it allows them to to bring out a different side of each other as teammates. Even our shy um, players really were able to step forward and and kind of get out of their shell. But I think it just it 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 just really emphasizes that. We're doing a lot more than just basketball. We are competing really hard every day, um, but we want to have fun doing it. And I think this group is definitely at their best um, and they're most comfortable and most relaxed when they're competing hard and having fun, whether it be on the court or off the court. So that's probably one of my most fun memories is, is watching them uh, compete at our house and, and just have a blast with each other and really go all in. Um, and I think that that was a lot of fun to see them. That's amazing. Now, did the coaches get involved at all? We did not, but I do have <laughs> I do have a deal with them that we'll get get to later in the season. Okay, so there's something on the line. Like you guys have, uh, if you get to like a certain amount of wins, well, what what's the deal with that one? Oh well, if if they cut down another net, then then they'll get a, a full out performance from our whole staff. Ooh, do you have the karaoke song picked out already? Oh, not yet, but I think we probably have a good idea. <laughs> nice. All right. We will look forward to that. First, let's start with your schedule coming up. Take me through the offseason portion and then highlight some of the key games you're looking forward to in conference play. Sure. We'll, um, we'll start off with two home games, Central Baptist College on the 7th, um, and that'll be a doubleheader with our men. Um, so it's a good, a good chance to, to get that home court um, rolling and, and see our fans back in the tack. And then we'll have our annual Education Day game on the 10th against Arkansas State. And I think that will be a, a tough matchup um, from the Sun Belt Conference and just give us um, a good opportunity to uh, compete and play uh, in front of all of our students um, you know, throughout the region and the local area. A great crowd. It's always um, a fun day. Um, and, and an opportunity for us to, you know, get out there and, and compete against a, a high quality opponent. Then we'll go on the road, we'll go to SMU, and um, I think that'll be a great matchup for us, a chance to get our Dallas kids um, and those players from that area back home in front of their friends and family, plus all of our alums. And we'll go out to um, Vegas for Thanksgiving and play an MTE. We'll play three games in three days and have a chance to match up against multiple NCAA tournament and postseason teams in that event. Um, based on you know how how that first round goes so we'll do that and then we'll come home we've got an sec opponent in vanderbilt coming in uh, to the thomas assembly center and um, always fun to be able to to have an sec uh, opponent in ruston and so that'll be a great matchup for us um, with second year head coach shay ralph and then 
as we kind of round out um, non-conference play, we'll, we'll end up, I think, playing UTEP that first game uh, of conference play right before Christmas, which will be something new for us. And then I think we're all going to adjust to the 20-game the conference slate. Um, will be a, a challenge for all of us, um, especially with just travel and having some road splits and instead of our typical Thursday, Saturday road swing. So I think it's going to um, be a tough test. I think our non-conference will definitely prepare us for our conference um, slate. And we're looking forward to, I know, night in and night out. Um, we're going to have some great matchups um, within conference play as far as um, tough, tough games on the road and then being able to protect your home court. Brooke Storr, head coach for the Lady Texters. All right, you got to promise me one thing. If you do, in fact, cut down the nets, somebody has to be able to record you guys participating in the karaoke theme night. Oh, definitely. We, we'll, we'll do that. You know, I think um, the one thing that we celebrate the little things with this group, and I think that's what's been so enjoyable, is we have a lot of genuine relationship um, built with this team and um, what we started last year, but just that investment daily. And so I think um, we'll definitely go all out. Uh, there will be some video. I'm, I'm hoping it won't be too bad, but um, I've, got, I've got a daughter that has some pretty good rhythm. So we, we may call in some help from our Regal Blues or our, our dance, dance line here at Tech to help us out. We, we're probably gonna need all the help we can get. We appreciate that. Good luck to you, Lady Textures, for the rest of the season. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. As the Conference USA tip-off show continues, we'll check in with the Louisiana Tech men's team. Welcome back to the Conference USA tip-off show. I'm John Tripp, and pleased to be joined by Louisiana Tech men's basketball head coach, Talvin Hester. Coach, this is your first year and first head coaching opportunity. You've been an assistant for the past 20 years. Describe, what does this opportunity mean for you? Uh, it means the world to me. Uh, like I say, I feel like um, I'm a representation of every assistant coach who kind of put their head down and worked um, and tried to do the right things, and I got an opportunity. I want to make the most of it. Your first day on the job, you get into your office. What was the first thing you did at Louisiana Tech? Um, sat down and breathed. <laughs> um, it was a little different probably than most because, in theory, it was my old boss's office. <laughs> So it was kind of moving down the hall in a sense. So I just took a time, took some time to breathe and kind of reflect and and kind of smile and and, and enjoy the moment uh, before I before I picked up the phone and got to work. For people who don't know your story, you were an assistant before at Louisiana Tech and you coached some of the former players. Kenny Lofton Jr., one of my favorite players, really, and most recently in college basketball. Can you give us an update of how he's doing with the Grizzlies in the NBA? Doing really well. He made the opening day roster. Um, I talked to him pretty much two or three times a week. Um, he's excited. Uh, he's same old junior, though. Um, I think the best thing about it, he knows he wants to get better and keep improving. He's not satisfied with just being there. He wants to be a big part of what they do. Um, and so he's, he's looking to keep fighting and moving forward and getting better. You were a huge part of his development. Now you can develop so many other players. Tell us about this team you now have coming back here as your first year as a head coach. Um, you know, we're a mix. We're a mixed bag of experience, experience from Louisiana Tech players, a, a couple of transfers, and, and then I think we got a couple of young kids I think they can, they can step on the court and play also. Um, uh, we're led by guys that you guys recognize, like Kobe Williams and Isaiah Crawford and Keiston. Uh, Willis um, and I think those guys are going to lead us and I think lead us in the right way I think we have some guys that played on last year's team that didn't quite contribute as much as those guys did but I think they're ready to step up into their their new role and play and then like I said I think we have a couple of transfers and, and a couple of freshmen um, that are knocking on the door to trying to show me that they deserve minutes give us an update on Isaiah Crawford I know he suffered his second knee injury coming back from that How's he doing? How's his spirits? And what have you seen from him on the court so far? Spirits are great. I mean, I was here for his first knee injury, um, and he came back and was third team all conference after that. Um, and, and his mentality then was a little shaken. Uh, but this time, his mentality is really good. Like, he doesn't favor. He doesn't. He's 100% he's go, and he's been practicing for a while now. I probably could have practiced some on our on our little summer tour, but we didn't. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing for him. Um, and so now he's full go, and he, it's like it's like he's normal. 
Tell us about some of the key newcomers, who you're going to rely on, and who do you think you're going to get some minutes coming in? Uh, right now, all of them are fighting. Uh, I think one has stepped up because of his experience is Drayvon Mangum, um, who transferred from Radford. Uh, previously was at Charlotte also. Uh, he's just old and experienced. He's, he's, he's somebody that kind of gets it, but he gets it in his everyday preparation. He's in here early shooting on his own, spends time in the gym, he spends time watching film. Um, he just gets it, and I think that translate, uh, translates at our level. Um, and then we got a couple young guys who I think will really step in. Um, Jordan Crawford is a freshman. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take him to figure it out, but um, he has the talent to play at this level and, and do really well. Um, and he's picking, he's picking it up every day. Um, but I know he'll have his freshman moments, but I expect a lot out of him. And then um, we have a young big guy who, who came in, who got here late in the summer, but um, he's coming along, plays hard, and that's all you can ask from a guy who, who showed up in the fall is to play hard and will teach you on the fly. So uh, Pierre Genesti is his name. And then we got another transfer from from uh, Angelina College named Quandre Bullock, who I expect to fly around the court and show how athletic he is to everybody. So I think those guys, those newcomers are there, but I don't want to slight the guys who were here last year who played uh, kind of some support roles and David Green and Caleb Stewart and those guys, uh, Will Allen, who was hurt last year. Uh, those guys I expect to step up quite a bit also. You got a chance this summer to see how this new team gelled together with their trip to Puerto Rico. Tell me, how did it go? What did you see on the court? And, and just give me a highlight from the trip to Puerto Rico. Uh, the highlight is that, that we're coming along. Uh, you know, we, we went out there to kind of learn about ourselves, who we were, to see what we were working on translated. Um, and I think it, I think it's going well. I think you know everybody says that you win or lose, but at the end of the day, uh, you don't go out there to you know per se win. You want to win every game. You, you you step in when the ball's thrown up. But at the end of the day, playing Kobe Williams or playing Keaton Willis 40 minutes uh, wasn't going to help me learn anything about my team. I pretty much know what those guys can do um, as returners that, that have done really well at this level. I need to see what some of the new guys were doing and. Um, I think some of the new guys stepped up and showed me who they were. Um, and some of the guys that were returning um, did some good things also. Um, and I think we can put it all together. Hopefully we're ready for November 7th. All right, so you talk about your schedule. Let's dig into it. November 7th, your first game. Take me through the non-conference action and then highlight some of the key Conference USA games you're looking forward to. Um, non-conference, we open with Mississippi College. Um, uh, before we go to Texas Tech and then Lafayette, University of Louisiana Lafayette. Um, and then we, we turn around and have Monroe at home. And then we go play a tournament in Alabama, Sanford's MTE tournament, uh, where we'll play Alabama A&M, Sanford, and Tennessee Southern. Uh, after, uh, after that, we'll play Southern University at home, uh, go to Wyoming, which is gonna be a really tough one also. Um, we'll have Stephen F. Austin at home before we open up uh, conference play at, U at UTEP and then we'll have a non-one to, to uh, leave us before Christmas. Uh, as far as conference matchups, uh, who I'm excited about, to be honest, I'm going to take it day by day and be excited about everybody. Uh, being a new coach in this league, even though I know this league um, a little bit from being here as an assistant for three years, uh, I want to take the time and try to grow and get better every game. I don't think it's one team I'm excited about playing more than another or one matchup more than another. I just want to take the first game ahead of me, uh, be excited about it, uh, and go game by game and try to try to hold the same excitement game by game until we get to the end of the year and see where we're at. In the preseason poll, you were picked to finish sixth. What are your personal mm -hmm. expectations for this team? To keep getting better. Uh, I was taught by some really good coaches before. And I think Mark Adams at Texas Tech said it best. He was like, the sign of a good coach is that throughout the year, his team keeps getting better. Um, and that's what I want to do. I don't want to focus on the destination as much as the journey. Um, so I want to see what this team can, team can do. And I really, really judge that by how we are in practice every day. Um, getting excited about the next day. Um, and not worried about what the numbers say, where we're ranked, where we're picked. Because at the end of the day, um, if somebody could pick it right every time, they'd be really, really rich. Um, and so we just want to focus on tomorrow and focus on the next practice. And if we can do that, those, those rankings will take care of themselves. 
Talvin Hester, first year head coach at Louisiana Tech. Congratulations and good luck this season. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.